Let me take a moment and talk about Riverside.fm. It allows you to record studio quality audio and up to 4K video. When you need to record audio and video, Riverside.fm can do it. So if you're looking for a hero platform for all your recording needs, from podcasts to webinars to any video content, Riverside.fm. I've got a promo code for you where you'll receive a 30% discount on the first three months of your subscription. I'll give it to you twice. The promo code is ship it. All one word, ship it, and you'll pick up a 30% discount on your first three months of your subscription. Riverside.fm. Welcome to another edition of the Best of the Pigskin Dispatch. And in this episode of the Football History Headlines for December 11th, we discuss a couple of Seminoles that were handed their Heisman trophies, the final AAFC championship game as played, and six touchdowns are thrown by a quarterback in Chicago, as well as many more Hall of Fame legendary stories coming up in a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of pigskindispatch.com. Welcome to the Pig Pen, your portal to positive football history and to the Sports History Network. We are one of a couple dozen, over a couple dozen podcasts on Sports History Network, bringing you the great sports history that you love and enjoy and want to listen to more of. And there are thousands of episodes on Sports History Network to choose from. Not just this podcast, uh, we have our dispatch family. Uh, Jersey Dispatch podcasts are out now. The Sports Jersey Dispatch, yeah, that, that comes from the, your, yours truly, as well as Pigskin Dispatch. Uh, also have a project with very famous and talented Oz Davis, our number 80 productions team. Uh, we have Orville Mulligan Sports Writer, a new audio drama coming out. Uh, you have some a couple episodes are out, some trailers, the pilot episodes out. We got more coming full-length episodes in 2022. Uh, looking forward to that. Check out what we have coming out so far. I think you're really going to enjoy it. And when you hit those full length episodes you are really going to be digging this audio drama another way to bring sports history to you the fans here on sports history network uh, we're excited about that and jersey dispatch our new website and uh, just starting to do a little bit of podcast i'm still doing the pigskin every day uh, but we will be getting more and more into jersey dispatches uh, podcasts very soon uh, we're running some of our our best of pigskin dispatch on that uh, jersey dispatch channel right now on sports history network and your favorite podcast providers so check both those out and all the other great podcasts uh you know we have a lot on all different sports you know arnie chapman and uh, football history dude and jeremy mcfarland with uh football as family we have boxing we have wrestling uh we have all kinds of different sports from around the world with some very very talented hosts and guests on each one of these i think you're something for everybody in the family to listen to and it's family friendly great uh, way to learn about sports history and history in general because sports are so connected with the history that's around them so uh, enjoy this best of the pigskin dispatch for december 11th coming at you right now and we will start off in the year 1937 on December 11th at Varsity Stadium in Toronto. The CFL Grey Cup took place at the end of the contest. It was the Toronto Argonauts who won their fourth championship as they edged out the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 4-3 to in an era of football where the scoring was much different than it is today. The full game recap is found at the CFL.ca website and we have a link to that on pigskindispatch.com. December 11th, 1938, at the Polo Grounds in New York City. The National Football League Championship had 48,120 fans on record attendance for the title game as they watched the New York Giants defeat the Green Bay Packers 23-17. New York's quarterback Ed Dendowski threw two touchdown passes while Tuffy Lehmans ran in another to account for the Giants' points. An interesting fact from this game was that each player on the winning team received a $900 bonus, while the team that lost saw each participant get a cool $700 each. December 11, 1949. According to a report in the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Bears quarterback Johnny Lujak passed for 468 yards and six touchdowns as the Bears tore apart their crosstown rivals, the Chicago Cardinals, in a one-sided 52-29 victory. 
December 11, 1945, the Cleveland Browns beat the San Francisco 49ers in the final AAFC championship game by the score of 21-7. As we mentioned a couple days ago, the AAFC suffered some deep financial woes while being in competition with the NFL, so it had to shut down league operations after this game was played. The NFL agreed to soften the blow by merging the Browns, 49ers, and the Colts into their fold. Brownswire.usa.today.com has the coverage of this story. December 11, 1966, at Franklin Field in Philadelphia, Al Nelson of the Philadelphia Eagles returned a Cleveland Browns missed field goal attempt that fell just short near the goal line an NFL record 100 yards for a score. This TD helped the Eagles cruise to a 33-21 victory over the Browns. This record return of Nelson's was trumped on November 4, 2007, probably never to be broken, when Antonio Cromartie of the San Diego Chargers went 109 yards plus coast to coast on a missed field goal of the Vikings at the end of the first half in a tie game. December 11, 1993, Florida State stellar quarterback Charlie Ward wins the 59th Heisman Trophy Award. The senior threw for 3,032 yards and 27 touchdowns per his bio on the Heisman.com website. The story goes on to say that Charlie went also on to take the Davey O'Brien and Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Awards and was named to the Walter Camp Player of the Year and the Toyota Leader of the Year Award. December 11th, year 2000, the Heisman Trophy was given to quarterback Chris Winky of Florida State University. The senior signal caller threw for 4,167 yards to lead the nation, and he also won the Johnny Unitas and the Davey O'Brien Awards for being a top quarterback in the nation for Heisman.com. The Seminoles lost to the Oklahoma Sooners in the national championship game at the Orange Bowl by a score of 13-2. That's got to be one of the oddest scores ever in football. December 11, 2004, the 70th Heisman Trophy was awarded to Matt Leinert, a Southern Cows quarterback. Leinert led USC to -to back-to-back national championships in the year 2003 and 2004. Matt, in 2004, threw for 2,990 yards and 28 touchdowns, according to his bio on the Heisman's website. The article goes on to say that Matt Leinert accumulated more votes than his closest competitors for the trophy, who were Oklahoma's Adrian Peterson and Jason White, and Utah's Alex Smith, along with teammate Reggie Bush, to win that big title of the trophy. As we take a quick break from the headlines, let me remind you that you can also learn more about the Gridiron history on our website, pigskindispatch.com. And you can contact me, Darren Hayes, at pigskindispatch at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Speaking of hearing from someone, here is one of my podcasting partners from the sportshistorynetwork.com that has a message for you. This is Jeremy McFarland from the Footballist Family Podcast. And I'm going to encourage you, if you get a chance, to come over to the Footballist Family Podcast where we look at what makes football special and family to each person. We talk about each team and we talk about the stories behind why fans love those teams. We encourage you to come and join us in our discussion. Thank you. Now, how about we celebrate some birthdays of Hall of Famers? We'll go to December 11th, 1910, Stratton, Nebraska. Nebraska standout fullback George Sauer was born. George was with the Huskers' All-American selection and had helped lead Nebraska to a 23-4-1 record in his three seasons there. At the 1934 East-West Shrine game, according to the NFF, Sauer scored both of the West TDs as they won 12-0. The National Football Foundation selected George Sauer to enter into their College Football Hall of Fame in the year 1954. After school was completed, George played with the Green Bay Packers for three seasons in the NFL. December 11th, 1924, Mr. Inside Army's outstanding fullback Felix Doc Blanchard came into this world. Doc was a player who became the first ever junior to win the Heisman Trophy, the Maxwell Award, and he was the first ever football player to win the James E. Sullivan Award in 1945. The cadets were undefeated in Blanchard's three seasons with the team, sporting an amazing record of 27 wins, zero losses, and a tie with three national championships in that period. Doc was more than just a running back. He was a place kicker, the punter, in addition to being a linebacker on defense. His pairing with Glenn Davis in the backfield may be the best tandem in collegiate football history. The 1945 season saw Doc run for 722 yards and 16 touchdowns. Doc found his way into the gridiron immortality in 1964 when he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. December 11, 1949, in Colorado City, Texas, Dartmouth outstanding linebacker Murray Bowden celebrated his birth. 
The National Football Foundation fondly recounts that Dartmouth's undefeated 1970 team was the last Ivy League school to be rated among the nation's top 20 teams, placing 13th and 14th in the two polls. The season Dartmouth's defense ranked in the nation's top 10 in seven statistical categories, including the first in scoring defense and second in total defense. Murray was a big part of those stats as he was consistently found in the offensive backfield making plays. The College Football Hall of Fame swung their doors wide open to welcome Murray Bowden in 2003's induction class. We really like to take this time to thank you, our listeners, for supporting this podcast and uh, reaching out to us. And if you would like to do the same, you can talk to us at pigskindispatch at gmail.com. And uh, hoping you're enjoying these football history headlines. And tomorrow we have another great one for the December 12th show as we'll talk about Namus' last game in New York Green. The Browns had a quarterback who tossed five TDs in a game and a famous rookie running back scores six times. To make sure you get notified the second, the next edition of this podcast is released, least please put your mouse cursor over that subscribe button and press it you can also find the episodes at your favorite podcast provider at pigskindispatch.com or the sportshistorynetwork.com where you'll also find many other great nostalgic sports stories and interviews with podcasts of an all-star cast of podcast hosts and guests that share some of the history's greatest sporting events and we'd like to see you there on pigskin dispatch and the sporting his sportshistorynetwork.com Peeking up at the clock, the time's running down. We're going to go into victory formation, take a knee, and let this baby run out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back tomorrow for the next podcast. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order.